right, so my name is Benjamin Nguyen, and I'm an instructor here at Sunset Learning. And today we're going to be talking about the packet delivery process and uh, shared Ethernet LANs. Um, for layer two addressing here, we're going to talk about uh, Ethernet and, of course, MAC addresses that are associated when we're dealing with Ethernet. So a 48-bit MAC address, again, it is used to identify the end user devices. Um, as far as the packet delivery process is concerned, we are talking about going from one PC to another MPC with a layer two environment right in between there. So that's why we have a uh, layer two device in that switch. Um, it's going to enable that packet to be carried across that local media, across this, each segment. So again, this is one flat topology on this one network. And of course, each protocol has its own network address format here. Um, they have the OSI, which uses NSEP, which uh, not a lot of people are using anymore. But primarily, right now, we're going to be talking about TCP IP, which uses IP. It is a 32-bit address format. Uh, of course, whenever you're doing the host-to-host -host packet delivery process, there's two things that we need to know. We need to know the source uh, IP and the destination IP, and also the source MAC and destination MAC. Again, each one will identify the host in the different networks. And these different networks, again, uh, this is still talking about a flat topology. So again, one network. But again, we do need to uh, identify the end devices as well. And again, to enable the packet to be forwarded to its destination, which we will again need the source and destination IP and MAC addresses. Um, for the host-to-host -host packet delivery process, as you can see up here, there's 10 different steps. Um, whenever we are going to send any kind of datagram across our network, we have our application data up here, which is um, according to the OSI model, um, it is going to be layers 7, 6, and 5 for the application data, uh, which we don't normally talk about that much. But as you guys can see here, the application layer, all that it's going to say is, I need to send something to 192.168.3.2, which is this host PC over here. And again, on the very bottom, you can see that there are layer 3 addresses and layer 2 addresses for each and every PC. Here, I'm going to be talking about the transport mechanism that we're going to be using, which is unreliable delivery. That is why uh, we will be using UDP, which stands for User Datagram Protocol. Now that I have uh, generated my raw user data, I'm basically going to encapsulate my Layer 4 header. And as you can see, with the Layer 4 header, we have our UDP header up here. It is unreliable. After I've appended that, I am now going to go down and append my Layer 3 header, which is my source IP, and also my destination IP. As you can see here, source IP of 3.1, and then a destination here over in 3.2. Okay. Once I find out about these, uh, uh, the IP addresses of where I need to go, again, it is time to append my Layer 2 header, but as you can see, the ARP, they are going to ask me, do I have a mapping for 192.168.3.2? Now, ARP is an address resolution protocol. Why I'm using ARP in the first place is so that I map my destination IP to a destination MAC address, which uh, happens automatically. ARP is turned on by default. So as you can see here, um, we are going to assume that ARP is not going to have an ARP cache inside of my uh, end user device and also my uh, uh, destination device. So 192.168.3.2, is it in my ARP table? Of course, we're going to say it is not yet. So we have to go on and uh, resolve that ARP process. So, what I'm going to do with my layers 7, 6, 5, and 4 is I'm going to place all those headers and the application data into this parking lot. And that's very much known as like a buffer. So as I hold that there, I'm going to tr try to resolve that ARP issue where I'm going to map my destination IP to my destination MAC address. And of course, I have to generate a brand new packet and inside of this ARP request. What you don't see is that um, they have the layer 3 address from the source, which is the 3.1, and also the destination IP of 3.2. Once I've appended my ARP request, again, I will append my source MAC address, which is going to be local to me. I'm always going to know what that is. And then, of course, the destination MAC broadcast, which is, of course, all ones, which is going to be a broadcast, which is also a FFFF for all the 48-bit MAC address. Okay. Once I go ahead and send that through my physical media, uh, I, again, I send it at, down as layer one. It's going to be just ones and zeros as your bits. It will be received here on the switch. And notice the first thing that happens when you, it is received by a layer th two device is that when it gets received by port one, the switch has to do one thing. It has to map out the source MAC address of this ARP request, and it's going to map it to 
port one of the switch. Okay. Once that happens, again, the switch is going to check it and say, do I have a uh, address for the destination MAC? And of course, since it is a broadcast, by default, a layer two device will broadcast that frame out all at the ports except for the port that it originated from. In this case, there's only one other port in port two. So I will go ahead and forward out port two. Once that frame is flooded out of port 2, it's going to be received by my destination end user. And of course, he's going to check this for encapsulation. So when he receives this as the bits in layer 1 as 1s and zeros, it will encapsulate and look up at layer 2 and say, is this meant for me, yes or no? Basically, what happens is he will check the broadcast. Since everybody is going to receive the broadcast, he's going to de-encapsulate because he knows that this packet is meant for him. So once he de-encapsulates it, what's left is just that ARP request. And just a reminder that ARP request does have that uh, source IP, which is from 3.1, going to 3.2, which he knows it is meant for him at this point in time. So what he's going to need to do is ge generate what is known as an ARP reply. Once that ARP reply is there, basically, he will append his own source MAC address, which is local to him. And then the destination MAC address, which was originally the source MAC address frame that was being sent originally. So he will append that right over here. Once I've done that, I send it down to layer 1, which is on the physical media. I get sent through as bits of 1s and zeros. It gets received here by port 2 of the switch. And again, it is kind of like this reverse operation where the switch originally received a frame on port 1, so it had to record the MAC address over here on the switch. Very much the same uh, thing that has to happen here on port 2. When he receives a frame, he must you know, take the source MAC address here and map it to port 2. And that's exactly what happens here. The destination MAC is in the MAC table, so I'll send the frame out of port 1. He will check the destination and the source, and he will uh, map it to port 2. And again, he will now check the destination MAC. And inside of the MAC address table, I already have that entry onto port 1, so that's why I know how to forward it out of port 1. Once that happens, I send it through down as the physical layer, as the 1s and zeros. Again, as my original source, when I receive this frame, what happens is I'm going to check these fields. I'm going to check the destination MAC address, check if it's for me. Yes, it is. So what I do is I de-encapsulate. What I'm left with is just the ARP reply. And again, now that I got this ARP reply back, again, address resolution protocol says I need to map whatever source MAC address to whatever destination IP address that I have over here. So I'm going to take this source MAC address, I'm going to map it to 3.2, and that's exactly what happens here at this ARP process. Once I have that issue resolved, now it's time to take from the parking lot, which is, again, that layer 7, 6, and 5, from uh, the application data. I will take the UDP header and also the source IP and destination IP. Now I'm going to take these fields and I will actually encapsulate them into that full frame header. As you can see here from the parking lot, again, what I had originally was this, okay? And from ARP, what I found out was how to map my destination MAC to whatever destination IP it's going to be. And since that source MAC address is going to be local to me, I append that. The destination MAC address, I will append that as well. Now I'm going to send this down as the physical media, as ones and zeros. And again, it gets sent out here to port one. Once it's received from the switch, the switch is just going to take it and say, hey, I'm a layer two device, so I need to check these fields and see if it's meant for me or meant for somebody else. So he will check the destination MAC. Once he knows that he has an entry inside of his MAC address table from that ARP, uh, request and reply. I will forward it out port two, which is what that is where the MAC address is associated with. And then again, it just will get forwarded to the destination. And that's the end of the packet delivery process. As you can see, just as a review, um, if the packet is going or moving in one direction, what you need to check out is uh, source IP, destination IP, source MAC, destination MAC. Now, if this changes some way, somehow, where you know a packet is actually going in the opposite direction, it's just going to change the fields uh, a little bit differently, like when you have the source IP over here, destination IP. And then you have the source MAC address, destination MAC address. And I hope that answers all of your questions. Hopefully I'll see you guys here in the classroom.